Thank you. Judge, it, it's a good segue into Judge Lamberth, who has served nearly almost 20 years in uh, the district that we are now presently in. And for, since 1995 until 2002, was it, um, was also the presiding judge. He was appointed by uh, Supreme Court, uh, by Justice Rehnquist to be the presiding judge of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which, again, many of you may not have been aware of its existence until today. And I wonder, Judge, whether you could start there by telling us about that court um, and then bringing that in, bringing sort of the larger perspective uh, of these issues that Jay has raised. Sure. So. The, uh, the Congress in 1978 enacted two statutes about the same time. One was the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, setting up the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, and the other was the Classified Information Procedure Act. Both of them are really key for what we're talking about today. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, is in, as originally enacted, uh, had seven district judges from seven different circuits around the country, appointed for seven-year terms by the Chief Justice, who would handle all national security wiretaps for the entire country. Court would be located in Washington. Judges would fly to Washington for a regular sitting. At, at one time, there was a judge here two days every other week. Now it's a judge every week. Uh, the volume has, has increased greatly since 9-11. Uh, I was chief judge of the court at the time of 9-11. I had done many bin Laden wiretaps before 9-11. We knew that bin Laden was a problem long before 9-11. And... Uh, I actually have talked publicly on a prior occasion about the uh, the night of the bombings in Africa and that I authorized five wiretaps that night in my living room at three o'clock in the morning in a hearing I conducted at home uh, that led to some of the most productive uh, evidence that was used later at the trials in New York of the terrorists who set off the bombs, the bin Laden associates who did the bombings in Africa. And so we had a lot of experience and a lot of evidence gathered as a result of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act coverage of bin Laden and his associates through the years. At the time I came on the court in 1995, uh, the, the uh, Ames case had just been disposed of by the prior chief judge of the court. Ames was a, a uh, CIA a person who had been working for Russia and was convicted of espionage. And in the course of the Ames case, there was great concern that the Attorney General had authorized some surreptitious searches of his home, acting under the President's delegated authority to authorize those searches. And there was some question, Ames's attorney, Plato Kacharis, raised a number of questions in the criminal proceeding about the legality of that. and so the Attorney General and President Clinton recommended to Congress and Congress enacted amending the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to also include surreptitious searches if they were for national security purposes. That took effect right at the time I came on the court in 1995 and our Attorney General Reno presented to me all prior authorized uh, surreptitious searches and then from that point forward I acted on all surreptitious searches as well as wiretaps. You could go in and plant a bug under the electronic surveillance statute all along from 78, but you couldn't conduct a search while you're at the premises. After 95, then you could also get authority to conduct a search as well as install a bug. Um, that statute has worked, from my point of view, extremely well. The, the applications are well scrubbed. There's a, a statutory scheme that the Attorney General has to personally sign off on each application. The head of the investigative agency has to sign off on each application. They're presented by a justice lawyer and by an agent from the investigative agency. They're presented with affidavits like we would do any other search warrant or any other wiretap warrant in a regular criminal case. We have the agent there who's knowledgeable of the case. We can question at the time we're authorizing the activity. And I think the process has worked well. 